Bob. Oh, Bob, the standard indicators say Chicago is still healthy economically, but it's not as strong as it used to be. Right now, the city is losing 20,000 jobs a year and gaining 9,000 welfare clients. Nobody likes to say this, but a lot of it has to do with the black problem. At least that's what you call it if you're white. <laughs> God damn. Well, they're real. Now, sick, this man. is when news was news. city is losing 20,000 jobs a year and gaining 9,000 welfare clients. Nobody likes to say this, but a lot of it has to do with the black problem. At least that's what you call it if you're white. If you're black, it's a white problem. Anyway, since 1960, more than half a million whites have left the city, but the black population has grown by about 350,000. We can't hear you, Al. You're muted, Al. So the 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 black people are coming and the white people are getting on fucking jet propelled rocket skates and getting out of town quick as they can. Because <laughs> they race. White, white people are fucking putting themselves in fucking cannons and shooting themselves out of town. <laughs> like, you know, Oh my god. I'm sure they ran at a loss. I, I'm sure they lost money running from them. They like, man, they, listen, man. man <laughs> nothing has changed, man. Look, man. I mean, they just look, it just doesn't work. Diversity is not your strip. 1960, more than half a million whites have left the city, but the black population has grown by about 350,000. The whites are heading for the suburbs. Most of the suburbs are still at least 99% white. And despite all the open housing laws, blacks are staying behind in the city. Twelve years ago, just one black family out of ten lived in the suburbs. Today, it's only about one out of twelve. The growth of suburbia means a more hectic rush hour for just about everybody, and that includes the 40,000 black people who commute to work in the suburbs. And sometime next year, for the first time ever, there will be more jobs outside the city than in it. Property values, house prices, are actually going down in the city. They're going up, of course, in most of the suburbs. Now, all these changes have been accelerated by the developers. They've been filling up the north side and the suburbs with high-rises and new houses. They've built so many, we actually have a housing surplus. What happens is that middle-class whites move out of changing neighborhoods into the new developments. The changing neighborhoods, in turn, become all black. In the neighborhoods, the blacks leave behind. They just fall apart. <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn. Listen, man. This is 1972, man. This Damn. is not 85 hey. with crack hit. This is 72. Hey, at least, at least at this point, there were actually neighborhoods that some people left behind. They don't they even leave in any the room. <laughs> they don't even rubble. Salute the um salute the deluxe two four seven eight um aka Cal ripping the aka the real MVP coming through once again, man. White families have more money than black families, and that gap gets wider every year. And about one out of five black families is below the poverty line and can't pay too much in taxes. If the whites and their money keep flowing out of Chicago, the city will eventually go broke. One way to stop that from happening might be to put a freeze on new housing in the Chicago area. Somehow, though, that just doesn't seem very likely. A lot of whites are moving out because the Chicago schools are so bad. So we might... <laughs> to this day, they suck. They probably got worse. They ruined the school system like they do everywhere. Listen, I tell you guys, like, listen, we, we're just like, and, and listen, it's not all of us. We we know it's not all of us. But it's enough. Per capita, it's enough of us to where if we become the dominant, a minority, or even 10% of the population, we destroy it. I mean, just fucking utterly rampage and ravage it. Salute Thanks to Milf me. Mandy. Milf Mandy says, it's almost like they just have these kids for the check. Who cares if they become a productive member of society? It's sickening. Yes, but it's sickening now, and it was sickening. What's this, 72? That's 50 years ago. That's crazy. Shit. Nothing has changed. 50 years from now, I'll get to be the same shit. 
The only thing that's changed is that they could be honest about this shit 50 years ago. They like he he's he he could never this guy would have been fired 10 minutes ago. He would have never said it. <laughs> he would have never yeah. made it to this broadcast. That's true. He would have never said that. He wouldn't have got out the production meeting, man. I wish you could see what the shit how system. shit is now. But that doesn't seem very likely either. In other words, Bob. It's going to take some pretty strong medicine to keep Chicago alive, but so far it looks as though we just don't have the nerve to swallow. Bob, something you said about housing patterns reminds me of a statistic about segregation in Chicago. If every neighborhood were to become perfectly integrated tomorrow, 90% of the total population, 9 out of every 10 citizens, would have to move overnight in order to accomplish that instant integration. Jesus. Segregated so white people, even within the city, even before you talk about white flight and all that shit, when they were living together in the city, the white folks was like, Look, we stand on our side of town, and you stay to, on your side. To this town. day, Chief, I don't know if you heard that that Chicago is the, yeah, the most, most segregated segregated. city in the yep. country. Yeah, because who would want to live around? fucking shootings and shit right. and well, then people and then those same people that are fucking committing fucking a thousand murders a year right are fucking constantly marching are so sensitive yeah but more, more than more than that chief i think it's obvious that people kind of gravitate towards their own you know like you have chinatown you have greek town you have little village i mean it is what it is no i i got that but it's also the fact that, like, when it's such a stark thing, like ninety percent is live one live the, the, around each other. That's that's very, very, very. That's that means there's an, other factors too. You know what I'm saying? The what other you mean? factors, so that's not like other own. than just people gravitate to their own. That's not my own. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm from here, so maybe I'm a fish in water, right? But from what I see, Chief, we we just gravitate towards each other. At least on burritos. Do. Are you saying that if you are you saying that if if black people didn't commit a thousand murders a year in Chicago, that white people would still not want to live around them? I I do I think so. I do believe that. Yeah, at ninety percent. I might agree. No, at a ninety at a ninety percent rate. I'm not well, that, that's about, a high rate. No, I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I don't disagree with you. Obviously, the specter of having litter everywhere and violence and loitering is not appealing. But no, I mean, if the, if, the, if the killing wasn't going on, then that stuff more likely would have gone go on as well. I, I mean, if gliders, yeah. gliders would be okay with looking around some people if they weren't, if they weren't uh, so, they weren't engaged in this kind of degeneracy. Uh, you should see. You should see, for example, Chinatown. It literally is Chinatown. You know what I mean? No, I, 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 I understand. I understand. But DC is the same way. I, I, I completely understand. I completely understand. But when it's that stark of, yeah, a, I, I feel you. of a thing, it, there's other things. TV2 News reporter Harry Porterfield has covered a lot of stories on that subject. Harry? Bob, if there was any sign that race relations are improving in Chicago, it wasn't noticed very much in 1972. A single glimpse of the confrontations at Gage Park High School is almost sufficient to sour even the sweetest memory of the year. But worse than that, it could be the flavor of the future. Oh, God. So they, they, they fighting at the schools. <laughs> there have been racial skirmishes there in the past, but none like the most recent clashes between black and white students. Hatred was the element not seen before. There's the fear that the presence of black students in the high school heralds a black migration into that predominantly white community. And neither the fear nor the hatred are likely to cool in the year to come. In the Austin area, white parents have avoided a Gage Park situation by taking their youngsters. Austin used to be white. Yeah. Holy shit! I, 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 the west side used to be a Jewish slum. They said this one neighborhood. This is just a neighborhood, Austin. It's not a yeah. district. It's not a ward. It's not it's a, a. It's, it's a funny, neighborhood. Man. They a have violent. seventy murders every single year, year in and year out. 70 and it's every a small year. small neighborhood I, it's not like a big area 70 murders every year in this one neighborhood and 99 percent of them are black out of austin high school 100. has it shifted to a predominantly <laughs> black enrollment although violence on i mean a, of... a cop might get killed 
Gage Park God, High true, appears true. to be the exception. White resistance to the black migration is still marked by acts of vandalism and individual violence. See, these gliders back so much better. Holy these, shit. These gliders <laughs> were cut from a different cloth, man. Let, let me let my gliders, man. Gliders, get in here, man. Um, Take notes. Let's just let the gliders. What do y'all think about this, man? Y'all think that y'all, 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 need to, y'all need to step your game up? And I'm not saying attack black people. I'm just talking about, like, Y- y- y'all, y'all used to be in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Like, get the fuck out of our neighborhood. And now look where y'all at, where it's like, like I could just like bop a white guy in the fucking head. And it's like, he's like, sorry, man. Um, I apologize, man. I'm sorry for slavery. Yeah. Yeah, but the like- federal government wouldn't come after, after you then. That's true. That's very true. Really? Are you sure about yes. that? Yes. I agree. For sure. If somebody went to your boss and said you did this, you wouldn't lose your job. Your kids wouldn't be pushed out of sports, out of the community, period. Right. You're on... uh, this shit is gold, Chief. This shit you're showing right now, it's fucking amazing. Yeah, I mean, if you if you if you had been shown in this photo on the news today in this same <laughs> scenario, you'd be fired before you got back to the house. <laughs> yo, you'd be dying. Everybody would know. Everybody would yo. Every the internet, they would have doxed you by now. They would have known all your business partners. Anybody who was doing business with you. Your fucking landlord, anybody Probably outside who had your house, protest monetary or financial tie to you would fucking be pressured into the severing, severing that tie. Salute to Georgia Swan. She says, My son grandparents moved from Inglewood to Morgan Park in the 60s to get away from sun wind, sun words. And it was okay over there until the 2000s. Yeah, man. So but I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know what really burns my gears, man, when it comes to situations like this? When we have our black activists that go out of their way to point out what they think is racism, and then when it's proven to be otherwise, they say nothing. Yeah, I mean, they, there's gonna yeah, right, you're never sure. gonna get a retraction. They, they say, right. that, that, was a that was a situation that happened in uh, in New Orleans, man, with this with this kid. In the middle of October, in somebody's yard at 2 o'clock in the morning, the guy shot him in his head because uh, he was trying to steal his, his dirt bike out of the yard. Well, uh, the guy's name was Merritt Landry. And when I tell you, man, they came out. This happened right after the, Tra- the Trayvon Martin shooting. And they ran this guy out of his house, uh, out of his neighborhood, got him arrested. They pressured the DA to uh, to, uh, to bring him before the grand jury. I mean, they, they spent the block with this guy. Mm-hmm. Um Two months later, after the kid got shot in the head, he and his brother was in somebody else's yard, got arrested again for doing the same thing. What? <laughs> um, the, the, the name of the case is called Marshall Coulter, C O U L T E R, and the guy who the the guy who was arre- I mean the guy who was arrested, the guy that shot him, his name was Merritt Landry, M E R R I T T L E N D R Y. Okay, man. Appreciate it, man. Um, make sure you put 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 that in the back chat too, man, or email it to me. You got my email. Hey, I, 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 I'm t- I'm tired of Inglewood getting a bad rap. I nothing wrong with a little gunplay, brother. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm 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 looking up the case. I'm I'm gonna see the actual case. All right. So the black migration is still marked by acts of vandalism and individual violence. Disenchantment with urban living and the availability of mortgage money are inducing many black families to move to the southern suburbs. Generally, middle-class blacks can afford to move, while those locked in poverty may be losing ground, and the distance between the two just might be growing. For one thing, the president is talking about belt tightening. Observers say that will mean a reduction or even an elimination of job training programs, educational projects for dropouts, and retraining programs for unskilled people thrown out of... You hear that? Programs. They were program. ending the programs. They, they cutting them off, though, right? Yeah, they were ending the programs, and they was mad about it. Look at these people, man. 
these look like jive turkeys, but <laughs> with the frog. <laughs> Talk it to me. Yeah, man, this is this is crazy, man. That an man. elimination of job training programs, educational <laughs> projects for dropouts, and retraining programs for unskilled people thrown out of work through automation or laid off in employment cutbacks. Many blacks without skills may have no opportunity at a job, while those mm -hmm. with professional or technical abilities will fare much better. Cook County Hospital. Okay, so many blacks without skills won't be able to find a job, but those who do will have. Will fare better. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that makes you know, sense. You know, you know what that means, Chief? It's party Racism. time. Yeah, man. It's, 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 this makes sense. Or laid off in employment cutbacks. Many blacks without skills may have no opportunity at a job, while those with professional or technical abilities will fare much better. Cook County Hospital acknowledged the problem with non skilled and finding work when it set up an employment office to help the thousand laid off there recently. The Kerner report of four years ago predicted that without large sums of money being spent to upgrade living conditions in inner cities and to improve education and job opportunities for minorities, racial polarization would continue. Judging by the past year, it's difficult to see any trend in Chicago that's going to make that condition better in 1973. Bob? Well, Harry, as you know, Susan Anderson once was a school teacher. And now she frequently reports on that subject for TV2 News. Susan, how would you say our uh, schools have fared during this? Well, it's almost a cliche, Bob, but we are getting nowhere in educating kids in big city schools. Compar <laughs> Very blunt. You see how fucking, but you see how just informative and factual these motherfuckers was? Yes. Exactly. There, yeah, there's it. no opinion in this. There's right. no opinion. There's very or very little opinion in that. I'm kind of and what she I... said, what she said, she'll back up with numbers. Mm. I'm kind of offended, guys. Yeah, this is, this is just, this is just raw report, man. This country's right. gone to shit. No, the, the, if if this is if everything's gotten worse as worse as journalism has yeah. in the last fifty years, right. this country. Is in deep shit. I wonder what's her gender, Chief. What was her gender back then? I think she identifies as a woman, man. I don't, I don't know think, that. I don't, I don't think <laughs> they wouldn't have like even entertained that conversation. <laughs> exactly. Maybe, maybe, maybe she was a transgender woman in transition of yada yada blah blah. They she wouldn't this. be on TV, that's for damn sure. Yeah, that's, that's her favorite. Compared to 111 graders nationally, 64 read better than the average Chicago high school junior. Absenteeism is another factor. In Chicago, the average student attends nine days, then misses a day. In the suburbs, it's 15 days of school to one day missed. The school board has begun several experimental schools to curb this trend. One is Metro High, where the classroom becomes a subway, factory, or TV studio. But the school board says lack of money prohibits Metro's expansion. Chicago and every other urban school district is going broke. Schools are financed primarily by the local property tax. This results in Evanston. So the white people are leaving with their money, their tax money, and the black people just... The schools, the schools suffer. The yeah. some people are tax receivers, so there's just not enough, there's yeah. not enough paying going on. And the fact that even if those schools aren't funded, they're still among the best in the world. What well, then so the not, kids are not going to school anyway, so exactly. Also, look at these schools. These schools were built by poor white people. The people in what these neighborhoods that built these schools were not rich. No, so, they weren't. But these schools are they're nice. I like the buildings are you know, the architecture and, is not and that's cool. what I mean. That's that's what I mean. It's because they gave a shit though. Exactly. <laughs> There's no excuse. There's no excuse for some teens to be failing as abysmally right. in school as they are. I don't care how much funding the school doesn't have because the white people left the city. Exactly. Township spending two thousand two hundred three dollars to educate each child, and Chicago spending one half that one thousand fifty three dollars per child. Several state supreme courts have ruled the state should collect all local property taxes and distribute the money equitably between districts. The issue is now before the U.S. Supreme Court. Wow, hold on. Parochial she just used the word equitably in 1972. 
Damn. Equitably, yeah. Equitably. Yeah. Equity. Yeah. Equity. Yeah. It's different. Equitably Just, is different. Equity. No, nah, no, nah, they're talking about fucking socialism. I mean, equity. When you're talking about breaking shit down equitably, that mm-hmm. is socialism. Yeah. Hey, I think do you know what Chicago? What it is now? Yeah. Do, do you know what Chicago spends on kids now? How much? Twenty nine thousand dollars per student. And how much are the teachers making? Because uh. <laughs> and, exactly. and they're getting they worse money. results than they did when they were spending a thousand dollars per child. They get be pretty good here. The teachers like in Chicago. Yeah, I mean this. This, this is um this this is a situation with the schools. You know how I feel about it. You know I I think it's a DNA thing. So I don't right. none of this but, stuff. Talk right, about. Chicago. Yeah, exactly. These schools are in financial straits too. Next year. They may be getting some financial relief in the form of tax credits to parents. Educators say the mood of students is changing. Students are now less outspoken. Group conformity is more important. Cheerleading is back in vogue. No one seems to know why, but it's a trend to watch. Schools have been forced to lead the way in racial integration. Probably no issue has caused more fear than busing. But now both blacks and whites are saying busing is not the answer to quality education or even racial balance. Teacher strikes are expected to continue to plague the schools with a threatened walkout by Chicago teachers on the first of the new year. Governor-elect Dan Walker says schools are his number one priority. He has pledged more state money to Chicago schools. When Walker becomes governor, watch to see whether he keeps education at the top of his list. Mom? And another salute to the lovely Mary M. She says, I found a solution in many sunmen. Man do on YouTube, LA parole board prison 30 plus years. Truth, what the fuck does that mean? Oh, man do on white, whitey, man do on whitey, LA parole board prison plus 30 years. True, I mean, the prison plus 30 years. Listen, the, the, uh, nothing has changed though, like they were giving out those sentences back. To, listen, man. Nothing's changed, man. Nothing has changed. TV2 Newsroom regular with us tonight is John Drummond. Because of his tenacity, we call him the Bulldog, Bulldog Drummond. John frequently covers police stories for TV2 News. We'll have his report on the crime situation after this. This should be good. (laughs) It sounds good. Chicago television viewers call us up or write us lots of letters about a lot of news stories. But crime stories, naturally enough, I suppose, seem to get people more worked up than anything else. John Drummond has a report now from the police news. John? Bob, everybody squawks about crime, especially the politicians. But they never seem to mention that much of our police work is squandered on things like arresting drunks or handing out traffic tickets. In spite of that, the crime rate in Chicago has been fairly steady recently. In fact, serious crime is down about... 3% this year. In the suburbs, though, it's a different story. The suburban crime rate is more than twice as high as it was a decade ago. Of course, the suburban population is going up, too. But we don't need any statistics to know that there's too much violent crime and not enough police manpower to deal with it. Part of the answer might be to let the police forget about so-called victimless crime, like gambling and prostitution. That way, police could spend more time concentrating on really serious crimes, the kind where people get hurt. There are experts who even think we ought to do the same thing about drug addiction. They contend that addicts should be allowed to buy drugs at low cost from a public health agency. That way, they wouldn't go around stealing cars or clobbering people on the head to finance an expensive habit. That may be a far-out theory, but one police official told me that half the auto thefts and burglaries in suburban Cook County are probably committed by addicts. Nothing is for so much of our crime problem that the whole thing boils down to this. Either we find some way to solve the soaring drug problem or else we keep getting mugged on the streets. In the meantime, the fellows who sell handguns, guard dogs, and burglar alarm devices continue to do a land office business. 
Bob. John, there's a special kind of crime we haven't talked about yet tonight. Crimes against the earth we live on. Uh, those crimes still are being committed. But Robert Osborne says there is some good news along with the uh, bad. That's about enough of that, man. Um, 